Welcome back to Study Smart Channel. We are already in the chapter 4 of Form 2 Science Human Health. A very important topic and you can expect exam questions from this topic. So, stay focused with me and let's start. The topics covered in this video are The definition of infectious and non-infectious disease Role of pathogen in spreading infectious disease and finally, the mechanisms to prevent the spread of infectious disease. Before we go into detail about infectious and non-infectious disease, we need to understand the definition of disease. Disease is referring to the abnormal condition of your body or mind. It is when you feel uncomfortable and you cannot perform your daily task as usual. There are two types of disease, namely infectious disease and non-infectious disease. Infectious disease referring to the disease that can spread from one person to another, while non-infectious disease is referring to the disease that cannot spread between one individual to another individual. The main reason for infectious disease to happen is because of pathogen. What is pathogen? Pathogen is the one that causes disease. Pathogens can transmit the infectious disease through mediums such as air, food intake, contaminated water and human contact or through vector such as mosquito or fly. As for non-infectious disease, the main reason for non-infectious disease to happen is due to genetic or bad lifestyle. Let's see a simulation on how the pathogen can transmit the disease from one person to another person. Infectious disease spread from an infected person to a healthy person due to the transmission of pathogens. These pathogens can transmit either through mediums or vectors. So, what is pathogen? Pathogen is an organism that causes disease. Examples of pathogens are virus, protozoa, fungi, and worms. As mentioned earlier, pathogens can transmit through two ways, namely medium and vector. The first medium we want to see today is through air. There are two ways pathogen can transmit disease through air, which is through the droplet transmission and dust transmission. Droplet transmission can occur when an infected person yawn, talk or sneeze, while dust transmission can occur when an infected person spit and its saliva dries up and spread as dust. Example of disease that can spread through air is tuberculosis, flu, SARS, influenza, chickenpox and COVID-19. The second medium we want to see today is water. Normally, pathogen transmission through water can happen in places with bad sanitation of water. Also, in third world countries, there is possibilities of pieces mix up with river water if the toilet build over river. These are the ways pathogen can easily transmit through water. Now, let's see the ways to prevent this from happening. First of all, Adding chlorine to water can help to kill bacteria found in water. Also, always keep the toilets clean and drink only boiled water. The disease that can be caused due to the transmission of pathogen through water is cholera, typhoid and dysentery. The third way pathogens can transmit is through human contact. Touching or sharing clothes with the infected person can cause disease such as ringworm. Other than that, sexual contact can result in pathogen transmission through body fluid and also through blood infusion. Apart from medium, the other way pathogens can be transmitted is through vectors. Vectors are animals that carry pathogens and transmit them. Diseases such as Dengue and Zika are transmitted by Aedes mosquito by transmitting Dengue and Zika viruses. Anopheles mosquitoes transmit Plasmodium malaria which result in malaria. Cockroaches and flies can cause typhoid disease while rats transmit Leptospira bacteria which can cause Leptospirosis. 
Finally, flies can transmit Vibrio cholera bacteria leading to cholera disease. Now, let's explore the mechanisms for preventing the spread of infectious disease. There are three primary mechanisms, namely primary, secondary and tertiary mechanisms. The primary mechanisms emphasizes personal health improvement. This includes bolstering the body's immune system through proper nutrition, regular exercise and adequate rest. Additionally, frequent health checkups can help to detect any potential health issues early on. Adopting a healthy lifestyle such as maintaining good hygiene practice and avoiding risky behaviors also plays a crucial role in preventing the spread of disease. In the second mechanism, the focus shifts to treating individuals who have been already infected. This involves finding infections, identifying mode of transmission, and implementing measures to isolate infected individuals from the healthy populations. Effective treatment protocols, including the injection of antibiotics, antiviral medication, are very important in controlling the spread of contagious disease. The tertiary mechanism is all about controlling the population of disease vectors and protecting risky individuals. This includes implementing vector control measures such as mosquito nets and also the usage of insecticide. Additionally, vaccination program can help protect vulnerable population from infectious disease by bolstering their immunity system. Okay students, in this video we saw the definition of disease the type of disease such as infectious and non-infectious disease, the spreading of the infectious disease by pathogens, and also the mechanism to prevent the spreading of infectious disease. That's all from me today. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye!